if you look at Dr. King and Selma, what they went through, it's almost identical to what you're doing today. How do you feel being compared to those leg those legends? Um, those are big shoes to fill, especially when you talk about marching. Um, you know, what we dealt with last year literally took us 56 years back. Um, and so to think that, to try to figure out what is different, um, what changed, really is the time, the clothing, the technology. We're dealing with the same thing over again. But the thing that I draw strength from, and I'm glad that I have, is the fact that they had youthfulness on their side and that vivacious um, tenacity to get out there and to speak up for something that they knew was right and to speak up for full equality and equity is something that keeps me going today because if these were the same things that they were dealing with 56 years ago and we're still having the question it now, what can I do? What can we do as youth to try to combat that? Now, you are a select few. Mm -hmm. You watch what happened in Georgia General Assembly, mm -hmm. January. You watch them pass the voter suppression bills. How do you feel? Where do we go from here? Um, how I feel about it, uh, it's bittersweet. It's bitter because why? You know, what? we're living in a progressive time. What For what reason is there to do something like this other than, other than to suppress a certain type of people, which are marginalized communities? Um, the sweetness I find in it is that when we voted last year, we literally made records. We came out in record numbers. Youth came out in record numbers. Blacks came out in record numbers. Hispanics came out. Black men, I mean, it was just so many record numbers. So that shows you that voting works, and it almost works too well, because if it didn't work that well, there wouldn't be certain bills in response to stop or to make sure that what happened last year wouldn't happen again. Um, and so when we look at Senate Bill 202, it makes me say, okay, now it's time to get on the ground. And now it makes me channel what they were dealing with when they were dealing with the civil rights, this, um, the voting rights act. You know, we're looking at something that's very similar that's putting us there. And so it makes me think, what can we do? It's about marching, it's about policy, it's about being in there, it's about knowing, it's about opening that conversation, especially in a time where these conversations maybe five years ago would have been taboo. Now we're talking about them out loud. You know, what was it, last week? The Senate had the bill on the floor mm -hmm. in terms of insurrection, putting together a panel. Mm -hmm. To be 26 years old and to see this foolishness go on, what sense does it make to you? And for those who don't know, tell us about it. Um, it doesn't make sense to me. Because when you look at history and you look, about, look at what's happened in the past, certain bills like anti-hate crimes and bills that allow people to continue to suppress, people to continue to um, marginalize certain communities. The sad thing about it is that you see those bills get broken up and put into other little tiny bills. And so when you think about that being on the table, it makes you think, what else have we voted against that we know is wrong, that's going to end up in this paper, that's gonna end up in another bill that we're looking for justice from. And so when you think of something so much as an insurrection bill, the fact that we have to even think about doing this in a response to something that we thought we would never see in our lifetime, it is crazy. And so I still bring up that point to where I say people use the language of certain bills in place to do workarounds and work throughs. They use the constitution to be able to do the insurrection. They literally, they took it literal when it said, if your government is not working for you, because there's a clause in the constitution that says that, it is your duty as a citizen to band together and overthrow the government. 
what did they see where the government wasn't working for them? You know, and so it makes you <laughs> wonder, what, why did you think the government was working against you? Because you didn't get your way in hatred? Or because you didn't get your way when people came out to vote for the democracy? You know, so it, 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 it's very interesting. It, it's hurtful and almost a slap in the face. You know, let me ask you this in closing. Mm -hmm. I can't vote, okay? Mm -hmm. But then you sit down and you look at all the folks who have preceded us. Mm -hmm. And what do we do? How do you feel when they tell you that it was fraud in the vote, the vote was stolen, but there is no legitimate court case or no evidence. What do you think of that? How do you feel? It builds up, and I don't want to say anger, it builds up a fire. So like that torch that we were talking about, it kind of lights that and ignites that a little bit more. It's like pouring lighter fluid on it. It makes me say, I want to get out there and really say what's going on because it makes you think who was the standard of validity that made you think that this was not right or what standards are you going by that takes this as fraud is it because there were black individuals that voted this way is it because there were young individuals that were voted this way brown individuals that's a question that we all should be asking. What standard of validity made it fraud? Because for something like that, you have to have some type of standard of, of truth or not. And so what truth are you going by other than the color of my skin or where I may live or how I may vote progressively or unprogressively when it comes to individuals? What makes you think that there was fraud that happened? So it just makes me, um, you know, and I'm, I'm glad I have people in this fight, other organizers and activists that feel that same way that says, okay, you say that it's fraud. And I'm glad that we have people that there are good representatives and there are good people that say, you know, it doesn't matter how many people, how they vote, there's no, no sense of fraud or there's no, no choice. Like we don't see this at all. There's no recollection of that. Unfortunately, we do have still have people that is whatever the law says, they're going to go against it. So. Anything you'd like to say in closing? Um, in closing, I would just like to say that for individuals like me, I'm, I call myself a middle-aged millennial. Um, I'm starting to realize that there are other people that are now currently looking at me that are younger than me in the same way that I look at individuals that have come before me to help me make my decisions and to get that fire going. For anybody who may be wondering where they stand in this fight, Think about who came before you, but then also who's looking at you and after you, whether that's a child or even your younger brothers and sisters or students that you teach. There is still generations underneath us that we have to fight for. Thank you.